good afternoon everyone so uh, so since uh, morning we have had many sessions related to the language aspects and how balrina is special as an integration language so in this session i'll be explaining to you about one more language aspect of balrina the balrina connectors and how you can use them uh, to create seamless integrations uh, so if we take the integration space today, it is highly dynamic. So what we mean by dynamic is that it involves connecting to different types of systems like uh, cloud applications, APIs, Internet of Things, mobile apps, and so on. So connectors act as a medium of integration among these various dynamics. Uh, so what connectors does is make the integration convenient and fast. The speciality of connectors is that they are adaptive and hence when you write an integration using these connectors, they become seamless integrations. Uh, so you can understand from this that connectors are an integral part of an integration, integration solution. So oftentimes if we take any integration product, we have a set of uh, built-in connectors that you can use for out-of-the-box uh, integrations in your solutions. Or sometimes uh, the integration product provides extension points that you can utilize to write your own connectors. So if you talk about the abstraction of a connector, the abstraction is really the advantage a connector provides when you write your integration solutions. The most important thing is that connectors make integration easy and fast. Uh, if we consider a scenario where you're trying to connect to a third party application or an API, Often there are a lot of complexities involved in the direct API uh, invocation. So these complexities can be in the technical details, uh, transport protocols, authentication, authorization, and sometimes even making multiple API calls to get a simple task done, and maintaining authentication among these multiple calls, and so on. So uh, a connector will abstract all these details and provide a clean facade that you can invoke in your integration. So that is how the connectors will make an invocation, uh, or make an integration solution simple and clean. So basically it clears up the clutter of writing a complex integration logic in your integration solution. So this is the definition of Ballerina connectors. A connector represents a participant in the integration and is used to interact with an external system or a service that is defined in Ballerina. So what this means is a connector is actually an external, uh, external entity or an external participant for your integration. Uh, a connector is made up of actions. So these actions are what get invoked when you write your integration logic. So an action is an operation you can execute against a connector. It represents a single interaction with a participant of the integration. So basically you perform a task or an action on an API or a service and that becomes the action for the connector. Uh, so if you take a connector, a connector is actually made up of a connection and actions. So connection is the physical configuration that uh, you need to configure to actually uh, get connected to that particular uh, connector. And a connector has a set of actions that is defined based on the type of the connector. So if we take uh, an HTTP connector, that will have the standard HTTP methods, the put, post, get, and so on. And if we take something like Twitter or Facebook, it will have another set of uh, actions like tweet, retweet, or in Facebook, update status, and so on. So uh, this is the visual representation of the uh, definitions that I described just now. So what you see on the uh, right side is the endpoint, which, is the, which represents the external participant or the connector. And what you see on the left is the default worker. So this is the main execution thread in a Ballerina program. And this statement box we have right here with uh, arrows going uh, in and out from the default worker represents the action invocation. So the arrow that's leading to the endpoint is, uh, is the part where you send the request or you invoke the action uh, on the connector. And the arrow coming back from the endpoint is where you get the response back from the connector. 
So there are two types of connectors in Ballerina. We have server connectors and client connectors. Server connectors are basically inbound connectors and client connectors are outbound connectors. So if we take a server connector, it's nothing but a connector that is acting as a service. So we have a bunch of built-in server connectors available with Ballerina like HTTP, HTTPS, and WebSocket. And also there are other connectors like JMS, File, and IO that you can import to your Ballerina runtime and use to create server connectors out of these. So a server connector will bind a service, uh, bind a service uh, invocation uh, entry point so that other uh, users of your service can invoke it as, uh, as they want in their integrations. So this is a sample HTTP server connector uh, using, written using Ballerina. So uh, the first thing is that we, when we write a server connector, we write it as a service in Ballerina. So you can see that we have a simple service uh, written, uh, a simple echo service. So what echo service does is just get a request to the service and reply with the same uh, message as the response. So uh, the first thing is with the service, we have this HTTP inside the diamond notation, which means that this is a service of the HTTP server connector type. So uh, with this HTTP protocol, we have some uh, configurations that we represent here as annotations. We have the HTTP configuration base path. So this is an entry point to the service, the echo path in the URL of the service, in service that uh, external parties can invoke. And then uh, if you take the echo message resource over here, it has a path called slash message. Uh, apart from that, it also has an HTTP method post. So all these uh, configuration details are available with the server connector and these options will define the entry points for this particular service. So if you take the visual representation, uh, so we have the HTTP protocol defined uh, on the top with the service. And then we have the transport line connecting to the resources, which indicates that the echo service of the HTTP protocol is connected to this resource. And we have all the uh, annotations that we have defined here that configure the resource mm -hmm. and the service. So what we have on the default, uh, default worker lifeline in the service is the same statements that we have here. But uh, the important part is the, conf the configurations that uh, define the entry points that when you expose this service to the outside, this is the contract that they follow to invoke your service. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier that we use the configurations to define the entry point for the service. So we had the uh, base path of the service and the resource path, which makes up the URL for this service. So it is uh, echo slash message inclusive of the host name. And this is a simple curl request. So if you check earlier, we defined a post, post uh, resource. So by default, curl has the post resource. And we pass in a string uh, request. Uh, and when invoking this with uh, curl, it will just print out the same request that we sent in. So if you run this service in the Ballerina Composer, you have the option of trying out this service uh, as an then and there. So if you uh, open the Try It tool, it will list down all the resources that is available. And you can just uh, configure the content types, the payloads, and the other configuration details, and simply invoke the Send button, and you can see the response here itself. So let's get into the other type of connector with Ballerina. So client connectors are what that interacts with external systems. So we have a bunch of uh, built-in client connectors, same as before, HTTP, HTTPS, and WebSocket. Uh, these are network connectors. And then we have API connectors like Salesforce and Twitter. And there are other data integration uh, uh, connectors like JMS, File, and SQL that you can import to your Ballerina runtime and use in your invocations. So apart from this, you also have the option of writing your own client connectors for your integrations. Uh, so let's see how we can use the HTTP client connector. Uh, 
Uh, what you see on the right is a screenshot taken from the composer. So in composer, it lists down the particular connector and an endpoint uh, of that connector that you can create and the actions involved with that connector. So if you take the HTTP client, it will have all the HTTP methods uh, and you can use these actions to create the, uh, create the ballerina program. So if we take here, the first step is to declare an endpoint. So when declaring an endpoint, we have the connector type over here. So in this case, it's HTTP, HTTP client. And then within the declaration, we create a, a connection out of this connector. So while creating the connection, we pass in the URL. And if there are any other options, uh, we pass them as well. So this will create a connection for this particular endpoint and it will, bound, uh, it will bind it to the endpoint. So once the endpoint is created, you can simply invoke any of the actions that are available with that particular connector and create the, uh, and write your ballerina program. So if you take the visual view of it, it will have the endpoint uh, that we just declared and a statement that with invoking arrows and uh, response receiving arrows uh, to and from the default worker. So API connectors are connectors that connect to cloud services and APIs. So we have uh, Twitter, Salesforce, and many other connectors that are available with Ballerina. So most of these can be imported to uh, your uh, Ballerina runtime and used in your invocation. So apart from this, you can also write your uh, own connectors. So API connectors are basically client connectors. So it is no different than uh, invoking uh, the HTTP client connector or writing a connector. So we will go into details of writing a connect in the next slide. Uh, apart from what we have, what we see here, there are many other connectors that are currently being developed, and they will be available uh, soon to be used in your integrations. So let's look at how we can write a connector. This is a this is an extract taken from the Twitter Ballerina Twitter client connector. Uh, this. Uh, uh, this is uh, too descriptive, but we will go step by step. So if we consider uh, sending a tweet uh, using the Twitter client connect, uh, using a Twitter connector, we need to first go through the Twitter API specification to identify which, uh, which API calls that must be made to uh, send, to update a Twitter status. So uh, first step, is to write a connector, so to define a connector. So first we define the connector with the connector keyword, and then we give a name to the connector. So since we are using, since we are defining a client connector, the convention is to give the API name and the word client. And then we pass in uh, a set of parameters. So these parameters are the parameters that are required to create a connection. So in this case, you need a consumer key, consumer secret, access token, and access token secret to create a Twitter connection. So we define it in the connector, connector definition level. So something else that you can see here is the annotations. So we have the description, uh, which will explain what the connector is and all the document, all the documentation comments for each of the parameters. So this is also something that you have to consider when writing connectors, because you're writing connectors for other people to use in their integration. So documentation is extremely important. Now let's define an action. So if you take the tweet action, you simply need to update uh, a status in Twitter and you only need the status string uh, to actually post a status and nothing else. So we will consider that aspect and we'll just write an uh, action like this with the action keyword and the action name saying tweet and then just, the, uh, just a string that accepts a status message. Uh, and in this case, depending on the requirement, depending on your requirement, we can decide whether we are going to respond with uh, a, a specific message or the same message that we receive from invoking the Twitter API. So here we will just respond with the same message. So we are having the return type as the response. Even here we have the documentation annotations describing each of these. Uh, parameters, returns, and the action itself. Uh, 
this is an extract from the Twitter API specification. So to identify how you are going to write the tweet action, first step is to read through the specification to see which API calls that you have to make. So if you look here, uh, in order to update a tweet in, your, in Twitter, you need to call the statuses slash update dot JSON uh, with status as a URL uh, parameter. So in this case, uh, status is an encoded, your encoded string that's passed to the statuses slash update dot JSON. Uh, so what we don't see here is the authentication part of the Twitter connection. So you can't just simply invoke this service, invoke this resource. You have to pass in authorization headers in order to, uh, in order for Twitter to validate this call and make the, uh, to update the Twitter status. So let's start defining the tweet action. So first step is to declare the Twitter endpoint. It is a REST API, so we create it as an HTTP uh, client type endpoint. We pass in the Twitter API URL and optionally endpoint timeout. And in the action tweet, what we do is we construct the uh, path and the request to be sent to the real Twitter endpoint. So in this case, it's the status slash update.json and we encode the status message that we receive as a parameter and append it to the URL itself. So this will create the tweet path and this tweet path is the real resource that you are going to invoke when trying to submit a tweet, tweet message in Twitter. This function you see here is construct request headers. So this is where you do the authentication header setting for this particular call. I haven't included the, co the code for this construct request headers, but what it does is accept, accept all the consumer key, consumer secret, access token, access token secret, and construct the auth header that is required to validate the, tweet, uh, the Twitter API call. So after this header is been set to the request message, we invoke the Twitter endpoint with the post action. This is the visual representation of the tweet action. Uh, this uh, is, screenshot is taken from the action wave of the composer. So composer has different weaves uh, depending on the, like uh, if you take the action weave, it will highlight on the action invocation. So as it shows a bird eye weave of all the interactions and hide out the details in other statements like assignments, function invocations. So this is a good view if you want to tree, if you want to see the high level picture of integration interactions that's going on in your solution. So here you can see that the endpoint is declared in the connector level. And in the action, we have an action invocation, the post action invocation that talks to that endpoint and gets a response back. So how do we use this Twitter connector? It is not different to using an HTTP client connector. The only difference is when you're declaring in the endpoint, you give the Twitter client as the connector type and you create the Twitter connection with this uh, connect initialization step by passing in uh, the consumer key, consumer secret, access token and access token secret that are required to create the connection to Twitter. And then you can just simply invoke the tweet action with a status message. So the visual weave is same as what we saw earlier for HTTP client connectors. We have the Twitter endpoint and the action arrows going to and from the default worker. Uh, so now I'm going to explain some more about connectors or some concepts that are involved with connectors. If we go back to the endpoint declaration, so we saw that we define an endpoint with a connector type and we give the endpoint name and then we create the connection for that uh, endpoint of the same type as the connector type that we gave before. And if you take the visual weave, this is the visual configuration in the composer to pass in the parameters, the configuration details for this uh, connection. So we pass in the URL and any other option configurations like the endpoint timeout over here. So this connector type that we bind with an endpoint uh, defines what types of connections can be uh, bounded to a particular endpoint. 
So, so far we had the same type of connect, connection creation within the endpoint declaration, but it doesn't have to be so. You can also write your own connectors or you can use uh, any other connector that is available with Ballerina itself to create a connection to be bounded to the same endpoint. But the important thing is uh, if you take the base connector type, the, uh, the initializing connector type should confirm to the base connector type. So what this means is if you take this basic auth client that we have here, it will have the same actions as the HTTP client connector. So the HTTP client connector has the HTTP methods as actions. So the basic auth client will also have the exact same actions. The, the equivalency of these uh, connect, the actions will be depending on the action name, the parameters that are passed in, and the, response, and the return returns of this particular action. So this is a form of decorating the connectors. We have the basic auth client which accepts an HTTP client, and we use that uh, connection to create an endpoint uh, on the connector level of the basic auth client. So this endpoint will be used in each of the action invocations in this basic auth client connector. So uh, if you take the get action, we have the path and the request similar to the get action of the HTTP client. And we have the set basic auth header uh, function that is invoked on this before calling the get action of the HTTP endpoint. So this is the HTTP endpoint that we passed in here, which gets assigned to an HTTP endpoint over here during the connector, in the connector scope. So before calling that, we use this set basic auth header to set the headers, uh, to create the basic auth header and attach it to the request. So this is the decoration logic that we have added with this new connector. So similarly, you can write any number of decorating connectors and you can uh, assign those as connections to an endpoint. Okay, so here we have the concept of binding connections. So far when we created an endpoint, we also included the connection creation logic uh, within the endpoint declaration itself, as we can see here. But it doesn't have to necessarily be so, uh, but you can also attach connections later on into, in your program. So if you take this, this endpoint, we have a basic auth EP2, which does not have a connection declared. So uh, we can create the connection separately, we, as in this statement, we use the create statement and create a connection of basic auth client type. And then we can bind these connections to an endpoint. So this basic auth client connection gets bound to the basic auth EP, which already had a connection but will get overridden by this new connection over here. And this, this endpoint, basic code EP2, did not have a connection, and now it will be bounded by this connection. So even though you declare an endpoint, you cannot use an endpoint unless a connection has been bounded to it. After a connection is bound, you can use en any of the actions that are available and invoke similar to uh, the samples that we saw earlier. So another way of uh, passing in a connection to an endpoint is uh, this step that we saw earlier, where we pass in a connection object as a parameter to the connector, and we just give the connection as a variable during the endpoint declaration. OK, so we had a whole session on resiliency and uh, how resiliency can be achieved with Ballerina. So I'm not going to go into details over here, but to simply mention a few uh, resiliency patterns, timeout, retry, and circuit breaker. And this is how we use the uh, options in a connection declaration to uh, configure timeout and retry. We have a timeout duration and a retry configuration with the count and the interval uh, of retrying. So this is another aspect that I want to uh, explain to you, how we can use connectors for creating integrations. So what I'm uh, going to do, uh, explain here is that connecting different connectors to create, uh, to achieve a simple task. So for example, you need to update your Facebook statuses as Twitter, as Twitter tweets, or you get some account details from Salesforce and send it as an email. So these are, so these are some simple tasks 
uh, th that can be useful in day-to-day -day life. So we call these as citizen integrations as well. In Ballerina, we have uh, the, the, the transformer. I think there were many sessions about transformer earlier as well. So with the transformer, you can transform uh, a request and a response structure. So if we take the Salesforce and Gmail example from before, so Salesforce account, suppose it has a get account action, and it has a specified structure for the response. So you can use that structure and convert it to the structure that is expected by the Gmail send mail, con send mail action. And to do the mapping between these two structures, you can use the transform. So after the transformation is done, you can simply connect, you can simply call the send mail action of the Gmail. So this is one of the simplest way of integrating using multiple connectors. So in conclusion, when you should use connectors? Uh, the most important uh, takeaway of using connectors is to hide away the complexity of direct invocation. So we discussed that there might be complexities in technical details, transport protocols, authentication, authorization, and so on. So a connector will hide out all these details and uh, will make sure that the integration is simple, fast, and conveni convenient than writing your own code. Sometimes the connectors are built into an integration product, as in with Ballerina, we have the HTTP connectors, JMS, File, SQL, a number of connectors that are readily available. But when you're writing your integration, sometimes you might be familiar with these particular APIs to feel comfortable as to directly invoke them. But it is always wise to use the connectors that are shipped in with the product. The reason is that uh, these connectors will be highly tested and used by a lot of people. And often they are evaluated by integration experts to be reliable and fail safe. So in order to uh, write your seamless integration solutions, it is always good to use the readily available vendor provided connectors. So suppose there is no connector written for a particular scenario. So depending on the frequency of access for a, of a particular connector, you can decide on whether or not to write your own connector. Sometimes uh, if it's a reusing logic, you can abstract it to a function and invoke the function. But if you take the integration concepts, if you're calling an external system, it is actually a participant in your integration. Hence, you have to represent it as a participant of your integration to, to have the big picture correct. So that is why you should represent it as a connector and allow other people to invoke uh, and use that uh, connector as it is, as an integration, as keeping conformance with the integration concepts. So, uh, so that is uh, it for this session. So we have to, we talked about Barina connectors and how they can be used for integration. So if there is any question, uh, I can answer them now. Okay. Seems like there are no questions. So thank you for your time.